Hi, my name is Luke Monsteller. How many of you have listened to music today? How many of you heard a song with a guitar in it? How many of you have ever dreamed of playing guitar? Many people dream of becoming a rock star, playing guitar on stage for thousands of screaming fans. The music industry is very glamorized by the captivating guitar work of greats such as Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page, Zach Wilde, Eddie Van Halen, and others. There is usually no spotlight for the guitar technician backstage restringing and retuning the guitar so that the show can go on. I myself have played guitar for about 10 years now, and around six years ago, I decided that I wanted to inquire in the inner workings of this magical instrument. And since then, I have constructed one electric guitar of my own, as well as done wiring work on several others. Today, I want to share with you what I learned on the journey of constructing my guitar, the steps involved along the way, and present the final product I constructed. Um, while building your own guitar may seem like a daunting task, it's something very accomplishable with a little research and tools you probably already have around your own home. Different parts of the guitar can be bought from different sources and I would highly recommend uh, shopping around for price comparisons and keeping in mind that every part you select for your guitar can and will affect the overall tone and sound of it. Um, so first let me familiarize you with the parts of a guitar. Um, the body is what is referred to as this section below the neck. Um, the neck is the portion which connects the body up to the headstock. The neck is where um, the left hand plays and these wires are known as fret wires and those separate different notes on the guitar. Um, right here, this white line separating the neck and the headstock is known as the nut, which maintains proper elevation for the strings above the fretboard. Um, in the headstock, there are six tuning pegs, which are used to tune the strings. The strings are attached at the other end of the guitar to the bridge, which um, also controls their elevation as well as string length, which is important for intonation. Um, this particular bridge has a tremolo bar attached to it, which is responsible for bending the strings and creating the sound known as the whammy bar effect, which is popular in much music today. Um, the white area on the body is the pick guard, which is a thin piece of plastic that protects the inner workings of the electronics and the body of the guitar from scratches from the picks. On it, you can see a switch, which is a pickup selector, and allows you to choose uh, which pickup you want your sound coming out of, as well as three knobs that control volume and tone of the sound coming out of the guitar. The input jack is located right here on this particular guitar, which is where a guitar cable would be plugged in and to an amp or a computer or some other type of device. Um, there's many different styles and shapes of guitars. This one is the typical Fender Stratocaster model, and its neck attaches to the body. They're separate pieces, they attach with four large bolts. Another popular body design is the Gibson Les Paul model, which, as you can see, only features one cutaway. And it is one solid piece of carved wood. The neck cannot detach from the body, which has its pros and its cons. So the first step when I was building my guitar was to pick what kind of body I wanted. And for aesthetic choices, I picked a Fender body. So this is the piece I ordered. Uh, I did not want to carve this on my own. Uh, that's a job best left up to luthiers, your professional professionals in designing stringed instruments. Um, so this is the body I received. As you can see, it's got holes for the pickups as well as a hole for the bridge and an area for the neck plate to attach. Uh, there's different types of wood you can use as well. This particular body was alder, um, mahogany ash. There's all sorts of woods that are, you can build a guitar out of that all affect the tone of it. So the first step in working on this body was to sand it down, uh, get it as smooth as possible, starting with a coarse grit sandpaper and working up the fine grit. Um, then I drilled holes for where the neck plate will be attached uh, for the neck. And then I began painting. Uh, this is about after three coats of painting. And as you can see, it still kind of lets in some of the natural wood grain through the paint, which some people like, some people prefer that look. I personally wanted a solid black glossy finish. So that was about three coats. Um, this would be about five or six coats. Um, that would 
be about seven or eight, nine, and I think it took me around 12 coats of black to get it to this sheen of black. Um, and then just for personal choices, I wanted to add uh, racing stripes to the top of it, which was as simple as taping off the guitar, uh, leaving the exposed areas, sanding them back down, and then painting that red. So once I removed all the tape, this was my finished body, ready to have all the parts attached to it. So the first step was to attach the neck. These were all of the parts that I had ordered from several different sources. Um, got my pickups, the volume pots. The pick guard I selected was black to match the guitar. And as you can see, I bought the neck pre-fretted. Um, that's a job, again, best left up at Luthiers. And so after the final buffs of the body, I attached the neck by screwing in the four bolts right here, which go through the body into the neck to hold it in place. Then I attached the tuning pegs at the top of the headstock. Um, the screws go in on the reverse side of the headstock so that the front simply looks like this. And this is where the strings will come through and attach to each individual one for you to individually tune each string. Now you may notice that the fretboard I bought did not have a nut in place. Then I had, or installed the bridge into the base of the body, and I also went with the tremolo bar. Um, and the tremolo bar connects to springs on the reverse side of the guitar, which will be visible in the final picture. So the next step after the external construction of the guitar was the internal construction and the electronics. This is me uh, wiring the pickups to the input selector, which is the switch that allows you to pick, as well as the knobs, the volume, and the tone controllers, which are called potentiometers, or pots as guitarists refer to them. And so the, basically the way the electronics work inside is the pickups send signals to the input selector, which sends signals to the volume knob, the tone knobs, and eventually to the output jack. Um, soldering is one of the more complicated steps of the electronics of guitar, but it's something that I learned to do very easily, and with some care it can be done really simply. Um, this is what the pick guard looks like on the underside after the electronics were finished. And that's what it looked like on the front with two uh, pickups right here and right here. These are called humbucker pickups, which is the two coils right next to each other. And uh, so at this point I was able to do some final alignment, getting the neck properly aligned with the body. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, the uh, springs I were talking about are down here, which allow the tremolo bar to work. And so the next step was to apply the nut at the top of the guitar. The nut that I ordered was a little too tall, so this I had to sand it down several times to get it to where the strings would lay it properly elevated above the fretboard. Uh, another important finishing touch is filing down the fretboard. Uh, some of the frets are, were uneven, and that can cause really bad fret buzzing, which is something guitarists really try to avoid. So after attaching the pick guard, being careful to avoid pinched wires and all, I attached where the straps attached to the guitar, which allows you to wear it around your neck. So that was my before, and this was the finished product, which I have with me right here. I can assure you it works perfectly and is my first choice to go when I'm playing guitar. Um, electric guitars have shaped the sound of modern music and retailers have the ability to overcharge for them due to their seemingly complicated construction. Uh, it's now evident that the majority of the steps are possible to do yourself and you can save hundreds of dollars when constructing a guitar. So the next time a guitar solo is played through the radio station Maybe you will understand the work involved in producing that sound and how much attention was paid to its sonic qualities. If you decide to take up a musical instrument, such as the electric guitar, I would highly recommend looking into building one yourself. Uh, you can make it as aesthetically appealing to you as you want, you will save money, and you will learn more about the development of an instrument that forged the sound of modern music, which has helped sculpt today's culture.